Hi everyone, in this video from Count Backwards from 10, we're going to take a look at the basic physiology of proning patients in ARDS. Now, before we get started, if you like the video and you like the content, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and be sure to pass it on to somebody else that you think it might help. So, the first thing that we need to discuss here and that we need to make note of is the problem in ARDS, and that is the problem of VQ matching. And VQ, as we should know, stands for ventilation and flow, blood flow. And so at the end of the day, in normal physiology in our lungs, we want the amount of air coming in and the oxygen coming in to match the blood flow that's going to that alveoli because the more in sync they are, the more gas exchange can occur. Well, in ARDS, what ends up happening is that we basically eliminate to some degree our ventilation ability because we get these edematous fluid-filled alveoli, and this makes it so it's very hard to get air into our lungs and exchange into our blood. And so this is what we call, when you have flow but no ventilation, a shunt. It would be the same physiology if you had, say, a pneumothorax and you can't get air into that lung, but there's still blood flowing there. So just to put the same concept in line. So I've drawn two bodies here for us, and on the left we'll call this the supine body, and that means that this is the dorsal aspect of our patient, and this is the ventral. And on the other side, we'll say dorsal, we'll say ventral, and this is our prone patient. Now, before moving forward, we need to understand one thing first, and that is that a majority of blood flow in a healthy or injured lung, either way, most of the blood flow is going to be on the dorsal aspect of our patient. Most of the blood flow in our patients, injured or not, is going to be dorsally. Now, it's not to say there isn't ventral flow, it's just that most of it is dorsally. Now, I'm going to also go ahead and draw us an, oh, that's probably a little too light. Um, I'm going to go ahead and draw us an alveoli next to each one of these blood vessels, and you'll see what happens with the forces as we kind of go through them. So we'll go ahead and put this alveoli here. So we'll go ahead and start with the supine body and we'll draw our heart here. And really in doing this, we're going to discuss kind of the factors that lead to compression of our alveoli on top of the already compromised alveoli that we have uh, from a physics standpoint. So on one hand, we have the force that's generated by the heart on the chest and the heart and the mediastinum are going to go ahead and exert a force on our lung that's sitting against the bed posteriorly. Next we have this lung that is all you know gunked up and it's heavy and it's fluid filled and that is also like kind of like a sponge is going to exert force more towards the posterior aspect of the uh, physiology. Then we also have our abdominal content. And because our diaphragm is relaxed, there's going to be a preferential pressure from abdominal content on the diaphragm, usually in the posterior aspect, because that's the aspect that is down, but also because it's less elevated than the anterior aspect of the diaphragm. And that will also go ahead and compress our alveoli. And then we also have to take into account the chest wall, which is going to be here. And the chest wall is rigid. And I'll go ahead and just label it chest wall. And every time we try to take a breath, we're trying to expand our chest wall. But as our intrathoracic space tries to push against it, there is an equal and opposite pressure being exerted back down 
on our alveoli. And so you can see the conglomeration of all of these different forces that are going to go ahead and push backwards and okay. down result in an alveoli that is now this big instead. This worsens our shunt because all of these different forces are now squishing down our alveoli, making it harder to ventilate and worsening our VQ matching. Because again, we have majority of our blood flow is going to go ahead and be posterior. So let's go ahead and flip our patient over, like we said, prone. And we can already see right away that our heart is now exerting force in the opposite direction. In this case, ventrally instead of dorsally, relieving some of that compression of the alveoli. We can see that the same thing happens with all of that junky, fluid, edematous lung tissue is also going to now push ventrally instead of dorsally, which is where our blood flow is. And our abdominal content is also now dumped anteriorly so that there's less pressure on the posterior aspect of the diaphragm. And then that chest wall that's here in front, like we mentioned before, because it's trying to keep in, the posterior or dorsal aspect is not so rigid. And so when we do take a breath and we exert that force going this way, trying to expand out, even though we do push backwards with the same force, the here we had the bed that was a semi-rigid structure, but the back can now expand slightly in order to accommodate that extra pressure being exerted backwards by that rigid chest wall. And this altogether helps prevent that alveolar collapse, or at least prevents too, too much of it. As a result, this improves our ventilation to that lung, and it maintains our VQ matching such that we get less hypoxemia because our blood flow, remember, despite being injured or healthy, despite the position that we're in, prone or supine, blood flow is posterior. Blood flow, I'm sorry, not posterior, is dorsal. It's mostly going to be to our back. Now, I will say the theory behind this is that from an evolutionary standpoint, when we walked on all fours, our dorsum of our back was basically up. And so our heart would be on the bottom of our chest and this would improve aeration and improve the amount of recruitable alveoli. We have more alveoli in our dorsal aspect to be recruited than on our ventral. And so by doing this, we really are able to recruit a lot more alveoli. We're, a lot, we're able to get better blood flow and better VQ matching as a result. So that's the basic physiology of proning patients, how we improve our VQ matching and as a result, decrease our shunt, which our shunt fraction is you know kind of what we're trying to do and improve our hypoxemia. As always, I hope this makes sense. I hope that it's clear as always, if you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to write in. I'd love to hear from you or if you're interested in getting involved. In the meantime, stay tuned for the next video.